Hi everyone, I'm Stephen and welcome to Watch Out. I'm continuing this uh, vlog kind of series of videos. This is about developing my skills that I know are a little bit weak. So my last one I focused on just removing and refitting the balance and getting more comfortable with handling the balance. This is a Seagull ST3600 movement, so it's a pretty large movement. And today I'm going to focus on uh, oiling the, uh, the teeth on the escape wheel. So I have done that a couple of times, but I know that I've kind of over oiled every time. So I'm just going to practice that and see how I go. So there's a special kind of oil that is used for oiling these. And let's see how we go. Okay, so the first thing is you'll see that is a tremendous amount of oil. So that is just not going to work. So <clears throat> one of the challenges that I have is obviously the movement is under the microscope, but the oil pot's not. So I can't actually tell how much oil there is on my oiler until I get it over here and I'm, I'm, oh gosh, that's even worse. That's shocking. I didn't even know it was possible to get that much oil on the oiler. So I can't actually see the oil pot. Um, maybe if I try coming around this side there seems to be less oil here. Okay, that's better, I think. Hmm, no, that didn't seem to work. So I guess this is the whole reason why it's important to practice this. I'm zoomed in all the way on the jewel, as you can see on the microscope, so I can't really see very much. Okay, no, oops. That hasn't really worked. I'm trying to get it on the on the face of the jewel. That's better. That's better. Okay, I'm happy with that. Now, I've seen this done a couple of ways. What we need to do now is distribute this over the actual teeth. And I went back and reviewed my videos from uh, watchfix.com, uh, Mark Lovick. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do it the way that he does it and see what sort of a result that I get. So what he does is he applies the oil like I have just done and then he reinstalls the balance.
So he reinstalls the balance. Now obviously the watch is running. So what that means is that the oil that was applied to that jewel is now being distributed across the teeth of the escape wheel. So then what he did is he took the balance out again Now before I do anything, what I want to do is I want to inspect these teeth. out a bit more than that. Right. So I just want to move the teeth around so that I can see each one. And what I want to see is that on each one there's oil on it. See this one here, I'm not sure that there is a huge amount of oil. And that one there looks a bit dry as well. Oh no. Now I can see a lot of it's will be the angle of the light too. Yeah, I think it's just the angle of the light. Sometimes the angle of the light just makes it look dry, but it's not dry. See that one there. So the other way that I've seen it done by some people is they'll apply the oil the same way, but then they'll manually advance it just like this, just what I'm doing now, and they'll go like five teeth or so, and then they'll apply more oil to the face and do another five teeth. So I think it's just a case of making sure that there's oil on each one. But as I said, but I have done it this time with some way Mark Lovick does it in his lesson. And, um, you know, this guy's a professional. He's doing paid uh, watchmaking lessons. And that's what he says to do 
which is what I've done. So I'd be interested to know whether you guys have got any comments or opinions. Uh, what he says to do then he says to take the pallet fork out and clean it because you'll see that there's um, there's oil certainly sitting on the top of that um, that stone which there shouldn't be. So what Mr. Lovick does now is take the take the pallet fork out and clean it, which means obviously we're going to have to let the power out of the watch. So I've never had these parts out. The only part I've had out so far is the balance. These screws are pretty tight actually. Tighter than I thought they would be. That's okay. Incidentally, I do not think this movement has been oiled at all. There was no sign of any oil on those um, on those escape wheel teeth before. So I take this little bridge out. Right, so I just got some clean rodigo. Oh. Clean-ish. Don't know where all that dirt came from. Probably my fingers. So what Mr. Lovick did, he just cleaned it with some rodigo. But you could also clean it with some one dip, I think, which is actually probably what I'd be more inclined to do, but anyway. Cannot clean it with IPA because the IPA will dissolve the, um, the shellac that holds the jewels in. Now, one of the things I quite like about this movement You'll notice that it's got it's got a separate bridge, this little bridge here, for the escape wheel. And the reason why I really like that 
Again, I've never had any of these parts out before. But I like that because it means I can take the escape wheel out without having to touch any other, other trainer wheels. Like so. So I can actually um, just clean this now. because I'm going to have another go at oiling this. Drop that in there.
Okay, why doesn't it want to go in there? Is that it? That one was kind of tricky because there's nothing to sort of like hold the screw. I have cleaned the oil off of this again, but that's okay. Um, so I think, yeah, since I have done that, I should give this one more go. That's too much oil. I'm zoomed in like this, I can't find my oil. There it is. Too much oil. Too much oil. I had this turn around before, didn't I? The oil's sort of like all sitting up on one side. Not much oil. Probably almost enough oil I'd say. Alright, let's give this a go. Oh, look at that. 
hardly any spillage there's just a tiny little bit that went on top of the escape wheel just there there's a little bit there that I didn't want I made it worse anyway doesn't matter so we can try the other way and that's to do this which is the way I've done it before one two three four five and then apply more oil here little tooth where are you ah, there it is One, two, three, four, five. Okay. I don't quite know why, but I just feel a little bit more comfortable doing it that way. Now, where'd my stone go? There it is. And um, I'm just going to try something else as well. Just seeing if this method can work for taking out the excess excess oil. Yeah, I think that worked. Well, I guess what I'm worried about with way one is under-oiling. And what I'm worried about with way two is over-oiling. So I'm not really sure whether one of these is more superior than the others. Like you can probably see, like see this one here? That to me looks like that one's over-oiled. And it might be because that might have been the first one that was there when I had a bunch of oil on there. See, that looks overalled to me. It 
So anyway, I think that's um, enough for now. So I'm just going to whack the balance back into this thing. And make sure it all kicks up happily. Okay, well I think that's enough of that anyway. Um, I'm going to have to do some thinking about what I think is the best way, way one or way two, but as I said I'd really love to read your comments as to what you think is the best way to do this to oil the escape wheel teeth. Um, but yeah that's, that's definitely two ways and I've seen both ways used in various videos. As I said, I probably feel a little bit more comfortable with with way two myself, but I'm not sure whether one of them is is better than the other or not. So I think that will do for this vlog. Thanks so much for watching, and uh, I look forward to seeing you on the next video. And don't forget to watch out. Bye for now.